What's going on guys, it's your boy Woodsy Owl, coach of the West Virginia Knockdowns, kicking off our Season 6 run in the Woods Draft League this time around. Uh, in Week 1 here, we are playing my boy Halu, who's coach of the New Jersey Lickitungs, uh, one of the OG coaches of the league, one of the only uh, Season 1 guys that are still around, so shoutouts to him. He has a, a very scary sand team this go around. Uh, Pretty much everything on his team, or his top five mons at least, could just spam Edgequake, which is scary enough to switch into on one mon, but when it's on like five of them, that's uh, pretty... Just having that spam available is uh, pretty scary to deal with. Uh, Infernip and Aerodactyl are pretty good at dealing with any of the bulky grass types that are going to want to sponge up any Earthquakes or anything like that as well. And then Rotom Wash is a pretty good counter to water types that are uh, a pretty big threat to a lot of his mons that are weak to that. Um, on top of that, he has something like Reuniclus with the Magic Guard, of course, works pretty well on sand teams like this. Also kind of sponges up his, uh, his weakness to something like a Trick Room team. So uh, Reuniclus is a nice little addition there. And then Compi, of course, is just one of his signature mods that he runs all the time. Meganium is hiding down here too for like screens potentially or anything like that. But uh, I wouldn't really expect it to come all that much. Uh, also, very good speed control with, uh, of course, Sandrush, Excadrill, and then Mega Aerodactyl with like the 150 speed tier that it has, and Infernip and Garchomp are pretty fast on their own, right? Confi with that triage ability gives it, you know, plus three priority moves and stuff as well, so... Uh, I think, that generally speaking, the game plan wasn't to try to outspeed him, it was try to eat hits and then dish them back just as hard, or if not harder. So, with that game plan... Uh, the first thing you might notice is I pretty much spam Shookaberry on my theme because, uh, like I said, Edgequake is like almost impossible to switch into. I do have uh, a couple of decent Stone Edge switch ins in like Empoleon and Neoqueen, but they are of course weak to that Earthquake, which is why we're running the Shookaberry. Neoqueen here is my biggest Tyranitar answer, I think. Uh, Tangrowth could also be, but I think I want to keep Tangrowth around for other things. Uh, it could also be uh, an emergency check to a lot of mons on his team with that Shooka Berry. It could maybe catch one off guard and has very good coverage to deal with and pretty much anything on his team. Pretty good comp bait check with uh, resisting its draining kisses and hitting it back pretty hard with the Sludge Wave. It's also my rocker for the week, which I think rocks could be nice specifically for wearing down Mega Aerodactyl, who I think is probably the biggest threat to me in general. So it would be nice to get something like that up. Uh, after that, we have a max HP, max attack, adamant Empoleon. We're running physical Empoleon so that uh, it can ignore the special defense boosts on his rock type mons that uh, get that boost from the sand, as well as we can ignore Calm Mind boosts on stuff like Reuniclus and Confei, because uh, again, this is another pretty good Confei check on my team. Uh, this is really the only thing I have on my team that could beat Mega Aerodactyl one on one. Uh, with the Shooka Berry, so, and as soon as Shooka Berry is popped, then I don't really beat it anymore. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, liquidation plus, well, Liquidation in general really just hits everything on his team except for uh, Rotom Wash, which is what the knockoff is there for. I figured knockoff spam is uh, also always pretty good. So getting rid of that thing's item and getting rid of its recovery is nice. Steel Wing is there to be able to hit the, the Confei pretty hard, and then Aqua Jet as just a nice uh, priority move, which is super effective on a lot of his mons. So I think Aqua Jet will come into play pretty well here. Uh, going on past that, physically defensive Tangrowth is probably my best defensive pivot to a lot of his mons. Um, with the leftovers, Leech Seed to try to keep myself healthy, and in addition to Regenerator, Power Up plus Earthquake, it's the majority of his team. Um, I think it actually hits like everything except Meganium, which whatever. And it's uh, going to be my main switch into stuff like Excadrill and Garchomp, who otherwise kind of just tear through me. Um, Specifically, Garchomp even can like, deal with Tangrowth pretty well. So, uh, I don't really have a lot of great answers to Garchomp. I'm probably going to have to rely on Revenge Killing it with Diancie and Hydragon a lot of the time. But uh, Tangrowth, I think, is generally speaking pretty good for Excadrill. Uh, and like, he could run uh, X Scissor, actually, so that's something I also have to keep in mind. But then we just have a pretty standard offensive Mega Diancy. We are running Rock Polish so that we are going to potentially be able to outspeed even a Sandrush Excadrill as well as like Mega Aerodactyl. 
or like any Scarfers or anything that he wants to run. If I get that set up and he does not have a Moonblast switch in on his team, uh, I think it actually two shots everything except for like maybe a max HP or Iniclus, which is why we are running the Encore there because um, if he is running max HP or Uniclus or something and he's like a Calm Mind set, it does beat the Stangency, so I can at least Encore him into Calm Mind and then maybe uh, switch into something like Victini or Empoleon to hit him on the physical side. Uh, Earth Power coverage there is just because uh, ground coverage is also pretty good against his team. Hit stuff like Infernape for super effective damage. Uh, past that, speaking of Infernape, Victini is our best Infernape switch in being able to resist his dual stab. Again, running Shooka Berry so that I could eat an Earthquake from Infernape as well as maybe surprise something else that's on the field. I think a lot of the time I'm going to have to rely on picking up a surprise KO with all the Shooka Berries because uh, I am running pretty good coverage for his team, but uh, eating hits is the uh, the biggest difficulty for me. Uh, v Create, Zen Headbutt, Brick Break U-Turn, just running four attacks. You turn, of course, just to keep up momentum all the time. V-Create is, even though he has a lot of resists on his team, is uh, still hard to switch in just because it's so stupidly strong and uh, also hits stuff like the Reuniclus uh, harder than anything else that I could be running. Zen Headbutt's just a pretty spammable move. He's only really switching to something like a Zen Headbutt would be a Tyranitar or an Excadrill who get hit super effectively by Brick Break or V-Create or something like that. So, uh... Yeah, Victini could be pretty good, could eat hits from a lot of different things on his team as well. Uh, another, like, it, probably my best for Uniclus switch in if he's not. And uh, probably just in general, my best for Uniclus switch in, as well as uh, High Dragon can pseudo check it. Running Choice Scarf High Dragon, just to be able to revenge kill stuff like Garchomp and Setch. Uh, maybe like a Scarf Sand Force Excadrill or something like that. Dark Falls, Dragon Meteor, Earth Power, U-Turn, that kind of coverage hits everything on his team really hard, except for Confei, who I was debating running Flash Cannon over U-Turn or something like that. But uh, I ultimately decided against it just because I do have so many very good checks to Confei, including Empoleon, Nita, Queen, Victini. So uh, I thought I could deal with Confei pretty well and just kind of open up the door for my High Dragon. Maybe late game clean with uh, Dark Pulse or Earth Power or something like that. So, getting into the game here, uh, he reveals to have no Infernape or Rotom Wash, which uh, I I'm not that surprised by. I had decent checks to Rotom Wash and Tangrowth and High Dragon, and then I did have the Bikini for Infernape. But uh, I thought maybe he would bring like a defensive Infernape even for like Tangrowth or something like that, but even then I hit it pretty hard with the Earthquake, so maybe not. Um... Getting into it, I lead High Dragon here because I figure it's just the safest thing. I'm going to be able to outspeed anything that he leads with. Uh, the only thing that would really be a bad lead for me would be Confei, who I didn't expect to see on the lead as he leads Reuniclus. Uh, so I am just going to click a Dark Pulse, try to scout what kind of set this Confei is or whatever, because I even though I know it's coming in. But I figure uh, I'm still pretty free to just click a Dark Pulse here as he reveals to be Leftovers. I'm just going to go into my Empoleon because I know that I'm going to be able to uh, pretty much wall this thing and shut it down. And I'm just going to go for a Steel Wing, not trying to predict it early or anything. But um, I know that this Reuniclus isn't really going to be able to hit me too hard unless it goes for like a Focus Blast or something like that. Which even that's a pretty risky play for him. I don't know that you would uh, click Focus Blast. So I do just go for the knockoff to do like 50% and get rid of his item, but he knocks me off and knocks off my Shooka Berry, which is something that is going to come into play later in the game, as you will see. So uh, I do force him to switch out again because he's going to want to presumably get his Regenerator recovery back, um, given that he was an Assault Fest, I'm assuming at this point that he was Regenerator. So I click Liquidation knowing that it's still going to kill his Reuniclus and it hits the rest of his team a little bit better then uh, knock off. As he goes into Garchomp, uh, Garchomp takes a good bit of damage on that. Garchomp is something that I really want to get chip on because uh, it and Aerodactyl are like the two mons that I think I have the hardest time dealing with. So he makes a double into T-Tar, which is good on him because uh, this is like the only time that it's really going to be able to get up rocks is on my uh, Tangrowth because it's the only thing that really it outspeeds on my team. So uh, good play on him to get that out as I just go for a Power Whip, because I don't have to predict anything here and get a good 60% off on it. Again, going to click Power Whip on the uh, the Garchomp, getting this thing pretty low. And uh, knowing that Tangrowth is really one of my better tricks to do this thing anyway, I am just going to stay in and knock it out with the Power Whip, as he does get a bunch of damage off with Fire Blast, which uh, my Tangrowth is looking pretty low now, 
which is kind of bad for me because I know I have to rely on this thing pretty heavily for a lot of the threats on this team. So I'm going to switch out and try to get my regenerator back or, or my uh, health back with regenerator at some point in this game. As I'm going to go in the uh, High Dragon knowing that I don't really need High Dragon all that much this game. And maybe he'll go for like an Earthquake or something like that and I can just avoid it. But he goes for a Rapid Spin and does a ridiculous amount of damage. Revealing that he is not only Life Orb but is Sand Force. So that is terrifying. Because uh, now he gets the plus one speed boost from Rapid Spin as well. So he pretty much... Or I think he does outspeed my entire team except for... He, actually he even outspeeds my High Dragon because I was running Modest High Dragon which... uh. Maybe I probably should have been running um, not modest, but he does go for the X Scissor and KO me there. I know that my Tangrowth is still too low to eat any hit from this thing. I might even uh, straight up die for him an X Scissor even if I was healthy. So I'm going to have to rely on one of my Shooka Berries here. So I'm going to go into Magneto Queen and eat up the Earthquake. <laughs> Why well, say eat up? It does 75% still even through the Shooka Berry. Uh, but I'm going to be able to at least take the hit and take out the Extra Drill. As he just brings out his next threat in Aerodactyl and pretty much gets a free KO and Aerial Ace on the uh, the Nido Queen here. So uh, I didn't really need Nido Queen all that much. It was uh, really just there for Titar, who isn't really that scary anyway for me and is already at 40%. So that is okay with me. This is what I was talking about when my uh, Empoleon getting knocked off is really bad for me because now I cannot eat a Earthquake from this Aerodactyl anymore. <laughs> so uh, I have to just go into my Empoleon because I have nothing on my team that could eat a hit from this thing. So I have to go into my Empoleon, get my Aqua Jet Chip, go into Victini and kind of just pray that he doesn't have a Rock move, which uh, he apparently doesn't because he switches out here. So I am at least able to get a, uh, a V create off and pick up a KO on this T-Tar. And at this point, I know that Victini is really my only chance of being able to deal with this Aerodactyl. Uh, so I have to keep it healthy. I go into my Tangrowth here thinking that I could get another switch out to get my Regenerator in. I know that Dianzi's probably not going to really do anything for this game, so I pretty much just sack it here to the arrow to get the, uh, the Regenerator health on Tangrowth. And here I am going to go back into Tangrowth with a little bit of health here. Uh, knowing that I could eat, now eat an Aerial Ace at the health that I'm at. And I could go for a Power Whip here. Uh, now I click Protect to try to kill a turn of Sandstorm so that uh, my Victini doesn't have to deal with that one extra turn of damage later on. Which is going to come into play as you'll see. But he is able to just keep clicking Aerial Ace and pick up another kill. So uh, now it's Victini against the world here. And uh, he goes for the Earthquake again. He doesn't have the rock move he shows. I'm able to eat it up because of the Shooka Berry, and I am able to take it out with a Zen Headbutt. Uh, now, only at 9%, I have to rely that I could eat a hit from this Confei, which I do because I resist anything that Confei even learns. It only does 6%, which is really good for me, and I'm able to Oko with B Create. And uh, because of the chip I got on Reuniclus earlier in the game, I am able to clean up with Victini and win this game with 3% uh, health. So, uh, GG's, Halu. Um, there were a couple of plays in the end game that he probably should have uh, had me beat at the end. Like, he could have potentially gone from... Uh, he could have uh, gone Reuniclus first and had the defense drop on me. So that Confe would kill from 9%. Or uh, he actually revealed after the game that he did have Dragon Dance on the Aerodactyl. So he, there was probably a couple of points in the game where he could have set up a Dragon Dance with Aerodactyl and just swept me. But we uh, we take what we are given here and uh, we are 1-0 to start off the week here. Uh, I think we are playing Vandasaurus in week two. So I'll see you then when we play him.